Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Jonathan Goldsmith had a charismatic macho man personality and a talent for making women feel special adopting his creative approach. But it wasn't the only thing that made the most interesting man in the world actually quite interesting. How did Jonathan Goldsmith outplay Warren Beatty in love? While Goldsmith has never rescued a bear from a steel trap like his famous persona from the Dos Equis beer commercials, he saved strangers' lives, climbed the highest peaks and lived the most adventurous life. But there was also misery, struggle and preservation behind that charismatic personality. So what it means to break away from one's past? What does it take to follow one's dreams? How one can learn to love? Jonathan Goldsmith's life story answers all these questions. So, let's dive in to the most interesting story of the most interesting person. When you hear the name Jonathan Goldsmith, the first thing that might come to mind is his iconic portrayal of the most interesting man in the world, in those memorable beer commercials. And while that character was undoubtedly alluring, the man behind the moustache was just as fascinating. No, we're not talking about his on-screen roles. There's more to Goldsmith than just his on-screen persona. His love of adventure and commitment to living life to the fullest make him a really interesting man. With a sense of keen enjoyment that is contagious, he travelled the world, sailed the seas and lived in exotic places. Even the most daring amongst us would be thrilled by Goldsmith's real-life adventures. Throughout his autobiography, Stay Interesting, he chronicles his journey from a Bronx boy to an independent Hollywood actor. His story about climbing Mount Whitney, the highest peak in North America, is one of the most jaw-dropping in the book. It would be a feat of strength and endurance just to get up, but Goldsmith took it to the next level. On their climb up the mountain, he and his partner came across another man who was struggling to breathe and losing consciousness. As soon as Goldsmith saw the situation, he came into action. With his bare hands and brute strength, he lifted the man onto his back and carried him down the mountain. Could you imagine the courage and strength it would take? It's difficult, right? But it was the right thing to do for Goldsmith at that moment. That's how he was, always ready to help others and take on challenges. That's just one of the incredible stories in Stay Interesting. It's filled with stories about Goldsmith's time as a cowboy, his adventures travelling the world and his encounters with some of history's most fascinating figures. It was all done with his signature charm and sense of humour. It's impossible not to be captivated by his spirit and zest for life on every page, and readers can't get enough of his personality. When it comes to women, what do you expect from someone who's so lively? The same excitement always surrounded him when it came to women. His surroundings were always filled with beautiful women and romantic settings. His love life was something to behold, with countless romantic partners and unforgettable escapades. He had a knack for finding the most beautiful and desirable women and making them feel special in his own unique way. One of his favourite spots to frequent was the Pink Turtle coffee shop inside the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, where he discovered an abundance of starlets hoping to catch the attention of Warren Beatty, who lived in the penthouse. Goldsmith quickly realised the potential of this situation and used it to his advantage, approaching these women with a clever opening line. Hi, are you waiting to see Warren? Well, Warren's tied up at the moment, but he asked me to buy you a drink. Goldsmith's charm and wit didn't just work in coffee shops, but also in the homes of Broadway legends like Elaine Stritch. Stritch would cook him late-night meals, including lamb chops with Roquefort sauce, at four in the morning. He even had a date with Judy Garland and heard horror stories from the set of The Wizard of Oz. One of his most memorable victories was stealing Clint Eastwood's woman. Surprised? Well, one of Goldsmith's best roles was in the 1968 western Hang 'em High, alongside Clint Eastwood. But he claims he blew that break after hanging out with the star's girlfriend. Later he admitted that she was drop-dead gorgeous and he couldn't resist. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. There are endless stories like this, including a wild ride with Tina Louise from Gilligan's Island. Their non-stop chemistry was something he would never forget. Goldsmith describes flame-haired Tina Louise, the most beautiful woman he had ever been with, 
a true beauty, tall, elegant, with a cool distance and complete, unfettered surrender. His lifestyle was adventurous, but Goldsmith never considered himself to be the most interesting man in the world. He attributed that title to his good friend and inspiration, the late actor Fernando Lamas. Why Lamas? Because Lamas's carefree way of living inspired Goldsmith to seek similar adventures, and ultimately became the basis for the Dos Equis character. Despite the wild times, Goldsmith believed in being honest and kind in relationships. He had lived in unhealthy relationships, but he always examined the truth within himself and his connections. His most meaningful relationship was with Joan Fontaine, a movie star whom he never had an affair with, but shared a deep connection that lasted a long time. You might be surprised to see this side of Jonathan Goldsmith, but that's what he really was, a true romantic at heart. When he fell in love, his thoughts turned to poetry. He couldn't pinpoint an exact number of romantic partners, but he knew he had a lot more than many Hollywood stars. And his advice to guys out there? Always be honest, be kind, and examine the truth within yourself and your relationships. Wonder how a person's thoughts about relationships can be so refined without learning from life lessons. Unfortunately, he learned his lesson the hard way. Looking back on his early life, Jonathan saw both the challenges and the opportunities that had shaped him. Born in 1938 in the Bronx, Jonathan was the son of a gym teacher and an actress. His parents' relationship was turbulent, and they eventually divorced when he was young. His mother was particularly volatile, and their relationship was fraught with tension and conflict. He often felt neglected and unloved, and he struggled to connect with her on a deeper level. Even with these challenges, Jonathan was a creative and imaginative child. He would spend hours lost in his own world, creating stories and characters in his mind. He also discovered a love of acting and began performing in school plays and local theatre productions. But life at home was far from idyllic. His mother's emotional outbursts and erratic behaviour continued to cause problems, and Jonathan often felt like he was walking on eggshells around her. He longed for stability and security, something that was in short supply in his childhood home. As Jonathan grew older, he began to distance himself from his mother and focus on his acting career. He attended Boston University's School of Fine Arts and honed his craft, determined to make a name for himself in the industry. But his past continued to haunt him. He struggled with feelings of abandonment and unresolved anger toward his mother, which would later inspire his charitable work with organisations focused on helping children who have experienced trauma. He struggled but kept going, and after graduating from Boston University, he moved to Hollywood, where he struggled through his mid-twenties. He worked a series of bad jobs to make ends meet. He was in construction and even worked as a garbage man. In fact, he often drove his garbage truck to auditions, changing into a suit right there in the parking lot as he took up five spots and angered other cars. Jonathan eventually escaped menial jobs with recurring roles in Western films, which were big business at the time. He once lied to get his big acting job, but even his lies seemed interesting enough to inspire. The producer asked if he knew how to ride a horse, and he said, like the wind and without breaking a stride. It worked. Unfortunately, he'd never actually ridden a horse. His first ride happened right on the set. The horse immediately sensed Jonathan's lack of confidence and freaked out. After a chaotic few moments, everyone ran to help him, and the producer then said, Like the wind, huh? They worked it out and moved forward. His days in construction and delivering trash were over. Goldsmith began to gain recognition as a character actor in films and television. Over the years, Goldsmith appeared in a variety of films and television shows, including The A-Team, MacGyver and Dallas. He was widely respected among his peers as a talented actor and a true gentleman. He worked with some of the biggest names in the industry, including John Wayne, Clint Eastwood and Robert Redford, and his professionalism and work ethic earned him the admiration of everyone he has worked with. His appearances read like an episode of One Thousand Ways to Die. His on-screen deaths included gunshots many times, electrocution, being run over by a wagon, and an inglorious public hanging. His character was even killed by John Wayne during Wayne's final film, The Shootist. The death scene required shooting Goldsmith between the eyes with a blood pellet that hurt. Unfortunately, Wayne was older and off of his game, 
requiring them to do seven takes. He was not a man to give up, and that's what he learned in his real life, to never give up. But he left acting for a while in the 90s and became a successful entrepreneur. Why? Because despite all the hard work, he'd never gotten that big break, never become a household name like his old rival Dustin Hoffman. The two were always competing for roles in the 60s. Eventually he tired of the rejection that comes with acting and decided to call his own shots. In the 90s he started an international marketing company for waterless car wash products. He was never afraid of hard work. He worked hard all his life, and that's what he did to become a successful entrepreneur. That business briefly propelled him into the good life, but when his business partnership went bad, he lost it all. Goldsmith was in his late sixties and broke. Then came a bitter divorce, and Jonathan found himself at a crossroads. He decided to hit the open seas, living on a sailboat and travelling the east coast. But as much as he loved this adventurous lifestyle, he missed acting. In 2006, he decided to give it another shot and got himself a new agent. One day, the agent called him about a possible role in a commercial campaign. Dos Equis Beer Company was searching for a new ad campaign that would set them apart from the rest. They wanted a character that embodied the brand's adventurous and daring spirit. That's when they stumbled upon Jonathan Goldsmith. With his rugged good looks, charming demeanour and worldly experiences, he was the perfect fit for the role. The campaign took off like a rocket. The commercials featuring Goldsmith as the most interesting man in the world were a hit, and soon he became a cultural icon. People couldn't get enough of his witty one-liners and epic adventures. He became a meme, a viral sensation and a household name. But as with all good things, the campaign eventually came to an end. Dos Equis decided to retire the most interesting man in the world, sending his character on a one-way mission to Mars in his final appearance. By the time he auditioned, Goldsmith had fallen on hard times. He'd spent the previous night in his 65 Ford pickup, but he didn't let the bad night's sleep hold him back. He was trying to break back into acting after a ten-year absence and some other failed endeavours. But when he retired from that campaign, he was already a celebrity magnet. Jennifer Lawrence, Michael Jordan and President Barack Obama were among his biggest fans. He spent a glorious weekend eating with President Barack Obama, playing games with him, chatting, smoking, drinking beer and just having a wonderful time, enchanting time. He cherished those memories in his memoir and considered it one of the highlights of his life. It was a memoir that he wrote while looking more closely at his legacy, living in Vermont with his wife and dog and his newfound freedom. It is not just a memoir, it is full of valuable lessons that he learned and wanted his five children, twelve grandchildren and all his fans to learn. He called his memoir a love story with life. He said, Life is an endless celebration of possibilities. It's about establishing one's worth, rather than being told what you're worth. It's about reinvention, perseverance and attitude. Keep going and keep your chin up, and as the adage goes, it's not how many times you're knocked down, it's how many you get up. This is the kind of motivation that we all get from our parents, especially from our mother, who always wants to see you at your highest level. Isn't it surprising how a person who never felt connected to his mother remained so optimistic in his life? Answering a similar question, he proved how balanced his personality is. A healthy man becomes his own mother. He realised later in his life that a child does not understand things intellectually and only thinks emotionally. But gradually in time, if one seeks the truth, he starts to realise that understanding things from others' perspectives is the only way to become a healthy person. Holding anger only keeps you away from yourself. When he came to good terms with his mother, he realised that she had her own problems and was not aiming to make his life miserable. Only a learned person like Goldsmith can understand that things really start to work out when you examine yourself, your past, your anger, disappointments and your weaknesses. Goldsmith sees life as an adventure not to be wasted, no matter how bruised you might get. His story is a reminder that we can all be a little more interesting if we just embrace our adventurous side. He lived his life to the fullest, but also learned the deepest truths of it. It's your life and you also have a chance to make the most of it, without losing hope in your dreams. But wait, there's more! In our next video, we're going to switch gears and spill the tea on the secret life of another American icon, 
you won't believe the scandalous truth about America's mom, Florence Henderson.